Oh, I'm not a fucking racist. Look at this bad racist. Hello, welcome to Rob Mulholland Has an Opinion, the podcast where I, Rob Mulholland, have opinions about things. How are you? Good. Today's episode is about a hot button topic. It is something that people love arguing about on the internet, and I'm sure the comments below this video are going to be an absolute fucking shit show. So, just to let you know, I won't be reading any of them. And so, this is about cancel culture. This is one of those buzzwords that's been sort of popping around at the moment. Like, there's always these every now and again, like every few weeks, there's a new word or phrase that we've all got to get really fucking angry about and have a big barney about. And cancel culture is the latest. It's been, you know, it's been going for a while, obviously, the idea. And the problem I have with the idea of cancel culture is that the term itself is so vague as to be basically useless because. People use it to describe entirely different things. Like, people use it to talk about when uh, a comedian gets in trouble for telling a joke that people are offended by. They use it to mean when people are harassed on social media. Like, ordinary people who've made a bad joke on Twitter, they get harassed. Or, say there's uh, some footage of someone 15 years ago in blackface and they get uh, a load of shit for that. But then they also use it for, like, people who are rapists who get called out for that, or, like, CEOs of companies who get a load of public shit. We really need to separate out these things, and that's why I don't really like the term cancel culture. I I just don't think it's useful anymore, because the things it's described are totally different and uh, complex, and some are good, some are awful. It's the thing, like, it's describing different things. So... Obviously, the idea of, like, cancelling people isn't, like, a new one. That's just a new term for it. There's always been people that publicly people haven't liked and have always wanted their opinions to fuck off. Like, these aren't new discussions we're having. People haven't suddenly got more censorious. There wasn't this time in the past where everyone was totally cool and laid back and, like, jokes were totally fine and no one complained about anything. Like, baby boomers or want to have you believe. Like, in the fucking 70s, it was just fucking open season. Like, Mary White. White House wasn't there fucking trying to stop any fucking mention of a nipple from going on telly. So don't buy that bullshit. It's not a new thing. The problem is with it now is we have a new method of delivering it. It's social media that is the problem because it amplifies and it becomes, when someone is in trouble now, it becomes a huge public spectacle that everyone wants to pile on. Now, here's why I think it's different for different situations, right? I'm going to, in this video, I'm not going to talk about people who are like cancelled for being like rapists or sex pests or bad eggs. I think that's an entirely separate separate issue and uh good i'm going to talk about people who are cancelled for something they've said something they've written maybe a social media post that sort of thing we'll keep it down to that end of it i've got to break it down into chunks otherwise i can never possibly hope to cover an issue this complicated so it, this is also complicated as well because there isn't one opinion to be had on this because it very much depends on who's being cancelled on whether cancellation actually exists now the thing i really want to warn against and the thing that really annoys me with this discussion and most discussions to be fair is always be wary of anyone who tries to sell you a simple answer if anyone is telling you either cancel culture does not exist or cancel culture is the biggest threat to modern society both of those people are not giving you the full fucking picture they're trying to sell their team's message i'm fucking sick of everyone being on teams for everything i'm so sick of seeing people on the internet who i know their every fucking opinion before they've even said it i can take a look at them take a look at their previous tweets it's like right you're on that side i get it you're on that side i get it i think it's uninteresting and unhelpful because with cancel sometimes it is great and sometimes it's great for the person being cancelled so here's the thing right a normal person being cancelled is like someone finding an old tweet or a facebook post or a video you made or something like that leading to you not getting a job or being fired from a job or harassed personally all that sort of stuff anyone who isn't in the public eye then this kind of public shaming is horrific and grim and can be so destructive and has led people to suicide it has destroyed entire lives and it's pathetic and childish and gross it's a really like horrible part of human nature that we see a pile on and we all want to be like oh i'm not one of the bad ones let's get the bad one then it's not me i'm one of the good ones because i'm the one cancelling the bad one it's a horrible impulse and you know public shaming was banned in the past because it's such a horrific punishment for someone to face the damage it can do psychologically is all-encompassing brutal 
devastating. I'd of course recommend reading John Ronson's book so you've been publicly shamed on this. There's some incredible stories in there that are mad, absolutely mad. People who've just tweeted a flippant joke who've had their entire life turned upside down and that is awful and I stand against it. I don't know what to do about it short of like, you know, us all not having social media because this is going to happen constantly. Because often the thing they've got cancelled for is not good. I'm not defending people making racist jokes. I'm not defending people doing blackface. But I am saying that people should have the chance to change and should have the chance to grow and learn and that we shouldn't be so gleeful in trying to like pour scorn and punishment on people. Like I saw one uh, on Twitter the other day. It was a, a 15 year old lad in blackface, right, on social media being a knobhead. And that's fucking awful. Don't get me wrong. But do you not remember what it was like to be 15? Do you not remember how fucking thick you were? How like everything just ran through your genitals? That is a failure of his parents. And this will now follow him for the rest of his fucking life. Because everyone wants to pile on and go, I'm not a fucking racist, look at this bad racist. He's a child. He's a shitty child. A real shitty child who needs to change, but he needs to be given that chance. Like I fucking hate it when ever there's a scandal that comes out from people's WhatsApp messages. Because we all know WhatsApp is is fucking private. What goes on in WhatsApp should stay in fucking WhatsApp. I don't know about you, in my group chats, we're fucking bullshit, we say awful stuff, we say horrible things to get a reaction out of each other because it's fun. That's very different to doing it in a public sphere. Like, when emails get leaked, when WhatsApps get leaked, the way people talk in private is different to how they talk in public because they trust the person that they're with and there's a level where you can say horrible, offensive things to each other that you both know is a joke. That when it's read out in the cold light, light of day. When you read out people's WhatsApp messages, yeah, it makes them look bad. Honestly, if my WhatsApp's leak, we're gonna have to cancel the entire fucking universe. But when comedians and famous people and CEOs complain about it, tell them to fuck off. I would absolutely love to be cancelled for a joke. It would be the best publicity I could possibly fucking get. I would love to get nicked. That would be, oh, so fucking good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See what happened to Count Dankula when he got arrested. He had 20 followers or some shit. Now he's like, he's got like a million subscribers on YouTube or something. And he's got no talent at all. He's not good at anything. Imagine what I could do with that level of publicity. I'd be, I'd be like the fucking Michael Jackson of comedy and not just from a bedroom antics for once. But the comedians who always complain about cancel culture are always the biggest pussies. They are always the most scared. They are not the people who go out to regular comedy clubs and speak to regular people. Because if you are a regularly gigging comedian, you know you can say what the fuck you want. No one is telling you what to say. Yeah, there is a chance if you are horrifically offensive, you won't get booked again. But that will be because the audience didn't laugh. I guarantee you no comedy club is complaining at anything you say if the audience fucking laugh. It's bullshit. It's bullshit to sell tickets. They go, oh, I'm being cancelled. I can't say what I want. And then go on fucking GMTV to talk about it. They're on every fucking TV programme. They're on every fucking newspaper. The only place they're not is in comedy clubs being good at comedy. Don't listen to these fucking fannies. You can't cancel me. You can't. Get as upset as you fucking want. You can't. Look at Joey Diaz, right? People came for him, tried to cancel him, and I'm... Look, I'm not getting into whether it's right or wrong on this episode. That's not what this is about. But he just went, no, I'm not cancelled. And nothing happened. And you can just do that as a comedian. It's absolutely fucking fine. Same if you're a celebrity. It rolls off him. Like, name me a famous person whose career has been destroyed by being cancelled. The only comedian I can possibly think of is Michael Richards. He used to play Kramer. And that wasn't a joke he was making. He just horrifically racially abused some people in a club. It wasn't like he was doing a funny bit. He got angry and just dropped, like, fucking six N-bombs. Which, you know, when you've been the family favourite on a massive public sitcom, probably not a great look. Apart from that, I can think of literally no one who has had their career negatively affected by being cancelled. Like, Dapper Laughs was a big one. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous when a bunch of uh, comedians uh, signed a letter calling for him to be banned and, I, like, you know, venues not to book him. I thought that was fucking outrageous, to be honest with you. Like, look, I don't like Dapper Laughs. I think he's shit. But I think he's got every right to be as shit as he wants to. And he was fucking around. He was trying to have a laugh, obviously. He was doing a comedy performance but his career hasn't been negatively affected he's got a massive hit podcast he still tours still does, does does shows it was great publicity for him like nothing bad happens 
when you're an ordinary member of the public, when you have no power, when you are a worker, when you're at the whims of a company that you work for, then yes, you can be cancelled. The only time that a comedian like complains about anything like this is when they're like fired from a show off a big network. And the answer to that is, yeah, you work for fucking Disney. Right? You work for fucking Fox. You work for the BBC. You were an employee of them. You have the same standards as everyone else. You can't just say what you fucking want. So don't work for these corporations. Don't bother. Start your own podcast. Do your own shit at home. Then you're uncancelable. Stop being a fucking fanny and do your own shit. All you're saying is that when you're like, ah, oh, comedians get cancelled all the time and I can't say what I want. All you're saying is, I want to go on a big company's show and make loads of money and be dead famous, but I don't want anyone to say anything mean about me. Well, well I'm afraid you can't fucking have both. If you suck the devil's dick, you're going to have to enjoy the taste of the fucking cum. So what I would say to you, though, is when you see a pylon of, like, a normal person, when you see, like, oh, look at this disgusting cunt and what they've done... Don't retweet it, don't share it, nip it in the bud there, because these are horrible things that lead to people dying, and people need the chance to reform, they need the chance to learn and grow and change, because when you cancel someone, you don't cancel them out of existence, they're still a human being roaming around this earth, and if you push them away, if you think you are a good, moral, nice person, and you push away anyone who doesn't meet up to your exacting moral standards, where do they go? I tell you where they go, straight into the arms of people who are willing to have them. Nazis. So, empathise. Engage with people. Talk to them about why they're wrong, sure. But don't do it publicly. You don't need to tweet about it. You don't need to try and win yourself some fake internet points by fucking crushing someone else. Main takeaway from this is, anytime you hear someone who claims to be a comedian complaining about cancel culture, tell them they're a fucking pussyhole. So there you go, that's my opinion on cancel culture. Roughly, I think I've just about covered it. It's a very complex topic, and I'm sure you're all going to tell me why I'm a cunt for what I think. If you have enjoyed this, though, and you want to support me in making more things, the best way to do that is through my Patreon. And uh, that is, uh, there is a link there. There you go, that's where you need to go. And on my Patreon, you can get uh, various rewards, you can get shout-outs, you can get free merch. I'm going to be putting a lot of exclusive podcasts up on there as well. Uh, you can join up for as little as £3, and I'm doing this all on my own. I'm doing this DIY. I'm going to be fucking uncancelable. So I'd love you to support me in that, because my aim is to keep making stuff hopefully ad-free if I can afford to. Like, look, I'm not sticking to that forever. I might have to, at some point, suck that devil's dick and see it. If it's salty but I would like to stay ad free and the way I'll be able to do that is through Patreon if you support me and you enjoy what I want to do if you become part of this and you make something where we can build an uncancelable future then please do that if you can afford to you can give a one off donation to uh, paypal.me forward slash popcom rob as well check out my stand up comedy special too big to fail that is popping up in a second there'll be a little link and it's dead funny it's proper good it's totally uncensored it's straight from me to you I filmed it myself I didn't go to TV producers and so no one told me what I could and couldn't say so check that out in a second make sure you subscribe to the podcast or, or the YouTube page depending on how you are enjoying this episode uh, make sure you give it a review all that sort of jazz check out my mailing list it is at robcomedy.co.uk that's the website where you can find out all the info about me every Friday night come check me out on the Comedy Roast that is on uh, Hot Water Comedy's YouTube channel uh, if you just search for the Comedy Roast Hot Water on a Friday night 9pm it's live me, Freddie Quinn and Brennan Reese, uh, sick comedians we're just are absolutely horrible about people who call in or send us photos. It's really, really fun, so check that out. And that is the programme that will lead to me being cancelled. I mean, I'm trying my best. I've said some absolutely horrific things, but still no dice. So I'll keep going, fingers crossed. And if you want to start a public outrage about me, about something I've said, maybe take a clip out of context, something like that, that would be oh so beautiful. Please do blog about it if you've been offended. Perhaps report me to the police. Anything you like, that would be absolutely beautiful. But I'll be back with another one of these if I haven't been cancelled to death next week. Music